Thank you for joining me for Another Cup, bringing your diverse skills and talents to apply to your work today. So our varied and diverse talents and skills and experience, how do, how do we bring that to bear to be our best now with our work? So I mentioned Leonardo da Vinci in the original message and I, I use him and I'm sure you can come up with other people who have a similar um, record of being diverse and accomplishing things in many different areas but I usually use him as an example of how I would like to vary the things that I experience the things that I take on the people that I meet all because I would like to be well-rounded and be able to be different. And we're always going to be different, but the truth is the more we specialize, in some cases, the less our personality can shine through. I mean, we all know what it's like when you meet someone and you have similar interests, similar ways of communicating, similar ways of thinking. It's awesome. You can sit with them and talk for hours and you really, really enjoy it because what you're doing is you're reinforcing something they see in you and you see in them because you agree on those things. What if we had the same type of enthusiasm and interest in talking with people completely different than we are? Now, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, your friends. Uh, friends have similar interests for a reason. Because you can engage in interesting and fun things together. But you can do that with other people as well. In fact, I try as much as possible to seek out opportunities and people that think and act and have different experiences than I do. Because I believe that's how we learn. I mean, we all want to be around people just like us. But the truth is we can benefit as well from being around people completely different. Anytime I run into someone who thinks differently or has different opinions, I have to think, what would Leonardo do? And in fact, if you have read any of the biographies about him or any of his history, you'll find that he was pretty quiet. While he was very talented, he was one of the most quiet people. I've heard this also mentioned that one of the skills that Nelson Mandela possessed was to be the last one to speak at any kind of interaction or meeting. And that's because he was absorbing all the beliefs that other people had. And he knew that that enriched him. And that when he gave his opinion or thoughts, that he knew his audience. And in fact, if we work with people, isn't that an important piece of what we do? The other thing that happens is when we form thoughts and whether it's a presentation or a story that you want to tell, really what we're doing is we're piecing together a narrative and the more and varied and different things we can pull into that narrative, the more people will appeal to. Don't get me wrong, if I know I'm dealing with a controlling personality, I know how to interact with that person. That being said, if you're dealing with a group of people, you want to appeal to all of them, or at least most of them. And so when you can bring in experiences and stories and things that you've exposed yourself to that are different, that has great value. In fact, it's one of those things that we may not enjoy all the time, but the truth is, if we value it, it has a purpose. I know that, and I draw a lot of analogies to nutrition, because I believe nutrition reflects a lot of other things in the world and in our lives. It's just a mirror for where we are. The truth is that biologically, and physiologically, our bodies respond to a diversity of diet. It may not be the easiest thing, but it is the most rewarding thing when our 
our nutrition is varied. We uh, ingest uh, and eat lots of different foods. And in fact, your taste buds will grow a custom based on the different things that we eat. You can learn to appreciate different foods and different things. I face this battle with my kids constantly because I understand and I enjoy lots of different types of foods and cultures and 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 my kids are kind of set in their ways. And I try every chance I get to expose them. And we should do this for ourselves. Expose ourselves to different ways of thinking, different cultures, different different experiences because what that does is it it creates another dimension to our own story and in reality if you sell or you're working with people or you're managing projects what you're really doing with every activity and everything you do is telling your story infusing a part of you in everything that you do because that's what makes us unique if anybody could do it well then are you able to use your abilities as best you can? But the truth is, there's more than one road to success and more than one way to do it, and you have to find your own. And that's why I'm talking today about diversity, not just in the people you affiliate with, in the people you surround yourself with, but our open-mindedness. Again, as you've heard many times, I'm sure, on a quote, Our minds are like parachutes, only good when they're open. And that includes being open to different ways of doing things, including those that you've taken on in the past. Can you go back and find times when you did something that you thought was useless or you've forgotten about? Think about those times and draw from it what you can because it makes you you. Now, inevitably, it's going to show up somehow if it was important and and foundational to who you are and who you're becoming. But also seek out new opportunities to talk with people, to travel, to, to broaden your own horizons. Never stop trying to do that because it will add an extra dimension to you, to your work, into the people that you can impact through both. Thank you for joining me for Another Cup, bringing your diverse skills and talents to apply to your work today.